Okay, to be honest, I always had a problem when I was looking at pictures. Not only photographs, but also painted ones. I was usually drawn to forms, shapes, colors, textures and techniques using to create the piece of art in question. And I was somewhat interested in the story behind the picture. But at no point in time I was really drawn to the emotional side of the pictures. At no point in time any picture evoked some kind of emotion in me. But it became obvious to me that this is one very crucial part of the image. The emotional side, the feelings that they should evoke. This lack of, I would call it almost emotional understanding, is also the reason why my so-called moody edits just don't work because I do not understand the feeling that I actually want to evoke. Once I realized that, I started trying to learn about understanding pictures and understanding emotions in pictures. But that was obviously doomed to fail. You can read about pictures, you can read about emotions, you can read about feelings. Heck, you can even learn the chemical processes in your brain when you have certain feelings. But if you have never felt a specific way, like heartbroken, lost, desperate, you will never truly understand what this feeling is like. You will never truly feel this way. And this is basically where I got stuck. But times have changed due to the coronavirus. I'm one of the lucky ones who can work his day job from his home office. But that also means that my entire physical interaction with other human beings is now basically limited to my girlfriend. And as time moves on, I really feel that need seeing my parents in person again, seeing my brother and his family in person again, seeing my friends in person again. With every day spent at home without physical contact to other people, I feel more depressed, exhausted. And while this is actually a really frustrating and challenging situation for myself, it opens new doors for me. I started to understand pictures not only from a technical and story point of view, but I also started to understand pictures from, from an emotional point of view. Or at least those pictures that the emotion somewhat relates to mine. Just recently, Sean Tucker released a video in which he talks about the healing power of self-portraits. In this video, he describes his situation, the divorce from his wife and his relationship to his body. Then he proceeds showing self-portraits of pictures that tackles one or more of these points. I cannot relate to his situation in general. I cannot even relate to, to his feelings in regards to his divorce. But I can somewhat relate to his feelings in regards to his body. He describes himself as a skinny, pale guy who has a very hard time putting on some weight to play in the rugby team. He shows his arms, which are pretty veiny, and just drops a statement where he is convinced that these physical traits rendering him unattractive. Then he proceeds showing pictures of his face, which is due to maybe some medical condition pretty scarred. And he stated that this ultimately renders him unattractive. I see the technical solution in his picture. I see the story in his picture. And I even see the emotional side in his picture. But in this video, there was one idea or concept, if you will, that really stuck with me. Your body has characteristics, someone might say flaws, but these characteristics ultimately make it your body. Embrace it. While I already have shot a couple of self-portraits and some of them even look cool, I don't feel like that they 
convey some kind of emotion or tell a deeper story. For the most part, they lack of what someone call the mirror effect. Basically, these pictures show me with an upper body shot or a headshot frontal, maybe slightly angled. But these angles and these pictures I know from the bathroom when I was looking in the mirror, hence the name. So it might be again my lack of emotional capabilities of understanding the actual pictures here. But it also just might be that these pictures weren't really emotional or evoke any kind of feeling. So I want to tackle that problem. One picture might not tell the whole story of an individual in one picture. And that is perfectly fine. Even a whole set of pictures might not tell the whole story of one individual in the photo. However, a well-rounded body of work of a couple of pictures will tell the viewer a much more rounded picture of the individual in the photo than one single bad, boring picture would be capable of any time. So this time I want to take the topic of self-portraits to a deeper level. I don't necessarily want the pictures to really look cool, but I want the pictures to tell a story, to convey emotions for the most part. I might have accepted my body as it is right now, though I'm working on building a more defined shape. And I want to quickly put in a message in here. I might not be skinny and I might not be fat and I might be someone who builds up muscle way faster than someone else does. But this statement is true for everybody out there. There will always be someone who has a harder time than you do in achieving what you want to achieve. Also, it doesn't matter at which point of your journey you are. If you are just starting out, keep going. Change will come. Change takes time. That's just the nature of it. If you're already working on improving or changing yourself and you feel like you don't see any change, be sure there is change. You might not see it, but others definitely do. Just keep going. The change is happening and you will recognize it. Embrace what you achieved so far. Celebrate yourself and then look for your next goal. Okay, so photographing my physique basically was the plan. And it turns out that does not work. Once I built up the setup and started shooting, I just hung up a black backdrop, stood in front of it and started shooting. That was fairly easy. But then I just had a quick glance at the back of my camera to see what the pictures look like and they were boring, emotionless to say the least. So I started to think about it. Is that really what I want to do? Is it really that I want to show people what my body looks like? Do I really want to tackle my, my attitude to my body or my relationship to my body? Isn't there a more prominent problem or emotion that I would need to tackle? Right in the moment that I asked myself these questions, it struck me. I have some feelings that are way deeper than actually um, maybe negative relationship to my body. And this is fairly simple. It's depression. I explained it earlier, sitting at home in home office with, with very limited physical interaction. I feel exhausted, I feel depressed. I truly understand, or I believe I truly understand this feeling. And so I thought, well, I could try to actually start shooting this emotion. I have no idea how, but I will do that. 
So I stood in front of the camera and just thought about it. Okay, how do I feel about the situation, the lockdown, coronavirus, not seeing anyone? And I allowed myself to really show the emotion. And this one here is actually the very first picture or well, actually the, the first picture that, that really showed emotion. But once I took this photo and I checked it on the back of the camera, I, I've seen it does show emotion, but it does not show my real emotions. It is not, not deep enough, if you will. That got me thinking. I really do need to allow myself or even force myself to show or express my real emotions. Not what I want to show the world how I feel, but how I really feel. So in the next set of pictures, I decided to dig a little bit deeper into that. Really show my vulnerability in regards to these feelings. And this next picture really expressed how I felt in the beginning of, of the second lockdown. First lockdown for me was pretty easy. I was so busy writing my master thesis and, and was basically occupied throughout the entire week from Monday through Sunday. So there was no room for, for any kind of emotions, feelings or anything like that. But once that was done, I was really, really frustrated. So this was the first picture, or this, this picture actually represents how I really felt in that moment. I felt, this is exhausting. I don't know how long I can take it anymore. I really want this to be over. I really want it to be over. I really want to go out there, enjoy my life again. Going into the next picture, the emotion really intensified. This feeling of being lost, being depressed, being on a brink of, of total... I don't want to say self-destruction because it doesn't describe the situation properly, but it somehow feels like that. For some reason, we live in a society where men crying is judged to be a weakness. I don't want this, to be honest. I think men should have the same right to cry as women because this is one way of relieving yourself, to release your emotions. This is why this picture is very important for me. Sometime, like two months ago or something like that, where, where I was basically at at the lowest point of my, of being even with myself, of being myself. Um, I had some, I wouldn't say hard breakdown, but it was really a tough breakdown for myself. Just crying in this situation, just feeling these emotions relieved me. And it enabled me to get the more energy for the upcoming weeks. I might be someone who is um, pretty rigid in regards to following the rules that the government gives out there. And even people who are pretty close to me maybe don't understand my point of view, maybe don't want to understand it, maybe cannot understand it. These two pictures here basically represent exactly that. While the coronavirus is so deadly, I want to limit the interaction to people that I love, people that I admire, to a bare minimum, just to not put them into any danger. Now, the last set of pictures here is basically a three-parted picture and 
You actually only see from, from a subject point of view my arm, but this is exactly the wave of emotions that I write when I read the newspaper every morning. It is pure desperation. Then reading about these people who don't want to get the vaccine, who don't want to wear masks, things like that. And that is just pure anger that I feel there. How can someone be so stupid? And then even if these people are that stupid, we need as a society to take care of them. So this was basically the story of how I discovered self-portraits as some kind of therapy. I would like you to explore this for yourself. You don't need some kind of super fancy um, camera, gear, studio, setup, whatever. You can do the same exercise just using your phone. Giving yourself the permission to accept your feelings, to embrace your feelings and see how other people see them can help you work through them. So go and try it out. Please let me know in the comments below if you maybe did that already. If you want to try it, how were your results? And maybe please let me know if you enjoyed this video or video content like that. There was something new for me, um, something new for the channel, and I actually enjoyed doing it. So if you did enjoy the video, please consider leaving me a thumbs up. That would help me out a lot. And aside from that, stay safe. Happy shooting and we'll see each other in the next video. Until then, bye bye.